belly climb up ahead. <laughs> There's an entrance. In this video, we are exploring the Maidum area from ancient Egypt. Here, there are numerous fascinating archaeological sites, including the unique Maidum Pyramid and the enigmatic Mastaba 17. This site is about 45 miles or 72 kilometers south of the Great Pyramid on the Giza Plateau. Right away, you can see the unique tower-like shape of the pyramid as it stands today, with its immense pile of rubble and sand surrounding the lower third of the pyramid. But we are not here for that right now. I want to head right over to this large and odd looking pile of mud brick and rubble known as Mastaba 17. Mastabas are tombs from the early Egyptian dynasties. They are made using mud brick walls and are usually rectangular in shape. This particular Mastaba is believed to be built concurrently with the adjacent pyramid by King Senefru of the fourth dynasty. However, there wasn't a single hieroglyph or inscription found on either structure. So, as with most constructions in ancient Egypt, there are multiple theories regarding who actually built these structures. Those holes you see in the walls? Most were burial graves dug into the mud brick around the 22nd dynasty. The first significant exploration of Mastaba 17 occurred in 1891 by Flinders Petrie and while he was unable to find a way into the chamber on that expedition, 19 years later he would finally uncover the builder's entrance. The vast majority of information on Mastaba 17 comes from Petrie in two of his books, My Doom, published in 1892, and My Doom in Memphis, published in 1910. During the second expedition, Petrie was assisted by Gerald Wainwright, and I use much of their information in this video. This was the only photograph I could find of Gerald Wainwright. It shows him handing out pay to local excavators during one of his later expeditions in Egypt. Before we enter, let's take a quick look at the construction of this special mastaba. This drawing by Petrie shows the layout of Mastaba 17 when looking north through the southern wall. Resembling a flat-topped mesa, the walls were made from unfired mud brick and go all the way down to the bedrock which, not being level, took some skill in planning to build. The walls also have precise alignment along the cardinal directions. The chamber is fully inside a hole dug out from the bedrock. Then, multiple layers of different size fill, mostly consisting of clean limestone chips, were added. These chips appear to come from the construction of the pyramid. Wainwright specifically describes the layers as, quote, peculiarly even, running in level lines across the mastaba." End quote. This shows the extra care taken in the construction of mastaba 17 compared with others, and while mastaba 17 is not the largest, number 17 is considered the best built mastaba in Egypt. Today, mastaba 17 is not entered from the builder's entrance, but through what is called the robber's tunnel, which cuts into and then below the southern wall. I wasn't aware of Mastaba 17 before going inside and had no idea what to expect. It did not disappoint. So, let's get inside and make that robber's journey. <laughs> There's an entrance. You're going first, man. Inside the tunnel, it was extremely dusty and very cramped. This made for slow going, and unbeknown to me, 
there were still additional obstacles to overcome before we would enter the chamber. And this robber tunnel, it has its own mystery. It was no ordinary hack job by people just hoping to find the chamber. This is how Wainwright depicts the robber. Quote, he knew exactly the position of the chamber and tunneling from the south end for about 20 yards from the point nearest to the construction, he made straight for the end of the long north and south passage, which he struck unerringly, end quote. Looking at this top view schematic of the Mastaba, it is clear that it would be unlikely for this to have happened by chance. It is possible whoever dug the tunnel likely did so while the builders were still alive or the construction plans were still available. There are other large mastabas that are believed to be for members of Senefru's royal family, both here at Maidum and also at Dashur. However, none of those compare to Mastaba 17, with its unique chamber constructed with megalithic blocks of limestone and its large red Aswan granite box. The lack of any inscriptions that would point to the tomb's original occupant greatly adds to Mastaba 17's confounding mystery. This Mastaba is also unique in that whoever was buried inside died before the construction of the tomb. The main megalithic chamber was constructed and the mummified body with their possessions placed inside and sealed. Then the Mastaba structure was built on top. There was no need for a traditional entrance to the chamber as was needed with other Mastabas. And even though the occupant was already deceased, great care was taken to build an amazing structure that still stands some 4,600 years later. After a straight but slow shot north, the tunnel drops straight down. There is a ladder to get to the bottom where it gets even more cramped. As you can see, this journey is not for the squeamish, but for the hardy explorer. You really have to watch out for yourself and take care exploring any particular site. It can be a real adventure. At this point, I couldn't even crawl fully upright. How tight is it still? Oh, it's tighter than it's ever been. <laughs> oh. Belly climb up ahead. After a short distance, you come to the hole in the chamber wall where the robbers finally made their entrance into the heart of the tomb. When Petrie first entered the chamber through the builder's entrance he had uncovered, he quickly saw this hole the robbers dug through the south end of the chamber wall. I'm sure he was more than a little disappointed. Oh. Made it. Oh, this chamber, which is even larger than that inside the accompanying pyramid, is the earliest private stone tomb known in Egypt. And once entering the main gallery, immediately evident are the large limestone roofing blocks. That is one giant block? I think, are you sure? Look, we have one, the same block all the way to the top. Oh. And this is the new ones. There is one, yeah. one two. And three, and four, five, six, seven. Petrie calculated each block's weight as an incredible 38 tons. Well, those bats are like. Yeah, they're not going to be able to get over there. That's why we're going to go slow with them and do it. Move ahead, it's one job. Okay. There certainly is quite a difference in the construction of this chamber compared with that of the mud brick exterior. 
Mastaba 17 also contains what is believed to be the oldest stone sarcophagus in all of Egypt. Petrie says, quote, The red granite sarcophagus in the recess is probably 50 years older than Khufu and is thus the oldest known. As compared with the Khufu sarcophagus, it is three times as thick. The length and height are the same, but the breadth is two-thirds larger. Its weight is 8.5 tons and the lid 3.5 tons, end quote. So, while the internal dimensions are similar to those of the box inside the Great Pyramid, the walls are around three times as thick. Wainwright says of the box, quote, The workmanship is fine. The accuracy of the flatness of the interior having an average error of not more than 0 0.025 inch over a surface of about 6 by 2 feet, and even this variation is in large, wide curves, end quote. This granite box, according to the official story, is considered the oldest granite box in the Egyptian society. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Why do they think this is the oldest? Because they believe this is from the first dynasty, because the pyramid over here is from the first dynasty. And some other things around it, no inscriptions here, but the surroundings. And they found One thing here. that really sets this site apart from many in Egypt is that remains were found inside the sarcophagus. These remains were still there when Petrie entered. The style of mummification was that of the very early dynasties, where the bones were stripped of flesh, wrapped in linen individually, then reconstructed as a body with additional wrapping. Several times, but they found one of the burials had significance because it was the style of mummification is that when they chop the body to several pieces and then they wrap each part of the body. Ah, and this is considered like the earliest way of mummifying. Okay. And uh, that will go like to, yeah, to maybe the early first dynasty. Okay. Luckily, there were some actual photographs taken of the bones and you can see the skull here. Wainwright says, quote, skin was clearly observable as a pale brown parchment on the cheeks and scalp, on which last there was a considerable quantity of curly black or very dark brown hair, end quote. In the end, these bones were sent to London, but unfortunately, they were later destroyed in World War II during the Blitz. Well, what can I say? This was such a beautiful day. It was a great sight with a great adventure and all shared with an amazing group of people. As for the pyramid, we will have to explore that in a later video. This was certainly the toughest structure entrance I made during my time in Egypt, and looking back, it was the most fun. It really gave me that Indiana Jones kind of feeling. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel and do hit the like button. This will help boost the video so it will be shared with additional curious people like ourselves. And if you feel like it, leave a comment. I do enjoy seeing what you have to say. Thanks, and I'll see you at the next video.